Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Lynn Trevisan, and I'm a full-time faculty member at UAGC. I will be the, the host of this session, English as a Foreign Language, Teachers' Use of Intercultural Competence Tests to Inform Teaching Practice. By joining us today, you acknowledge that this session is being recorded and will be shared with TLC-related materials. Microphones will be muted for this presentation, but we encourage you to post questions and comments in the chat. Also, we have enabled live transcription. If you would like to use it, click the live transcription button at the bottom of your Zoom window. Now, I'm pleased to introduce you to Dr. William Hamilton. All right, Dr. Treverson, thank you uh, for the most gracious introduction and an invitation to speak at the 2023 UADC Teaching and Learning Conference. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Dr. William Hamilton, and in answer to the question posed by TLC, does the culture of higher education need a new paradigm? I present English as a foreign language teacher's use of intercultural competence tests to inform teaching practices. This is an overview of what I intend to cover about the speaker, uh, why this study, problem research question, literature review methodology, research findings, applications, and what's next. About the speaker, I have a, a doctor of philosophy in organizational development and leadership, specialty training and e-learning. I'm a retired U.S. Navy Surface Warfare Officer 04, or Lieutenant Commander, which is a major in the other services for 23 years. Uh, I was a lecturer at the Malaysian Maritime Academy for about 10 years. And I have been a certified professional in talent development for seven years with the Association for Talent Development, also with them a best and awards judge for about five years. Uh, recently, uh, intercultural development inventory qualified assessor, and for the past four years, a qualified English as a foreign language teacher. I aspire to make an impact with intercultural competence assessments and evaluation on culturally responsive teaching practices diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging outcomes for business impact. Before we get started proper, um, here are some questions to think about during the presentation, and I'll get back to these near the end of the presentation. And these will be put into the chat, and there's also some posts, uh, some, some polls that I created. So the first question would be, how would you think about your intercultural competence? Second question, how does your personal intercultural competence impact your teaching practices? And the third question is, if you are not currently teaching, how might your understanding of intercultural competence impact your daily interactions? So if you could put those uh, in the chat or answer the poll questions, we'll get back to those later. So, so why this study? Uh, the researcher interest. So my initial thoughts were on personality traits, you know, like the Briggs Myers disc, Big Five leadership. Uh, research and personality traits is quite complex due to subjectivity, lack of consensus, cultural variations, reliability and validity issues. As an EFL teacher, I noticed cultural diversity concerns in language uh, learning, for example, the content that I was teaching as an EFL teacher. So between personality traits, cultural interests, teaching EFL, and cultural diversity concerns, it led to an interest in measuring and applying cultural sensitivity using instruments. For example, the Kushner 1986 instrument in the Stewart 2010 dissertation. However, you can see that's quite dated. So a search of the Kushner name led to the Mahone and Kushner 2014 revised instrument and other references. For example, the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. So my demographic needs were qualified EFL teachers, at least 21 years of age, and at least one year teaching culturally diverse adult learners. Outcomes. The study explored the measurement of cultural sensitivity among EFL teachers and the intersection of cultural diversity concerns and language learning as intercultural competence, revealing valuable insights into teacher perceptions and practices, emphasizing cultural affirmation or value, responsiveness, and student-teacher collaboration in problem solving. Problem, purpose, and importance of the study. Problem. Lack of intercultural competence teaching standards leads to inconsistent intercultural competence assessment use among EFL teachers. 
purpose. Explore the links between assessment scores, EFL teacher perceptions, self-assessment gaps, and culturally uh, responsive teaching. Importance, informing effective teaching and fostering culturally responsive education. Research question. How do EFL teachers' perceptions of their teaching practices change following the self-assessment of their intercultural competence? So this is a, an overview of the literature review. It explores the research problem for a certain level of intercultural competence in culturally diverse online classroom. One of the first things covered was the search strategy of scholarly research articles, books, ProQuest, et cetera. And the references, 75% of them were between 2015 and 2022, expanded the course to include similar works. Uh, also covered, in the review was the social constructivism, at least my take. Reality is socially constructed as experiences, sense-making, and negotiated understanding. So also covered um, was my uh, philosophical worldview, you know, a challenge between non-traditional and traditional views, you know, such as the Eastern philosophical thought, uh, acknowledging the freedom, openness, and oneness of nature and the universe as opposed to the traditional uh, Western dogma. Also covered was intercultural competence that is fostering meaningful cultural awareness, interaction and sensitivity between the various groups, definitions of it, need, measures, applying it, misconceptions, development and teaching. Uh, and applying intercultural competence, that is the intentional relationships or dialogue and interaction between individuals and culture um, discuss was the history of it, complexities, and linking it to the classroom. Uh, as far as methodologies, right, this is a qualitative single case study in a bounded system of EFL participants. Two particular uh, studies that were influ influential were the uh, Churchill study and the Pina Dex study. So the Churchill study was about reconceptualizing traditional functional language teaching, that is, the grammar and pronunciation and learning skills and pedagogy by improving student engagement and agency in the context of global citizenship and cultural awareness. The Pina Dex study took a comprehensive look at teacher profiles for insights into how the English language teaching can help develop intercultural communication competence through teaching practices that transform language learning. Uh, last up was the available instruments in both short and long-term studies, for example, the IDI or intercultural development inventory, and the one used in this study, the inventory of cross-cultural sensitivity version two or ICCSV2. So what you're looking at here is the conceptual framework that guided this study, and it represents my initial socially constructed integration of intercultural competence into the teaching practices of EFL teachers based on a search, analysis, and coding of the literature review just discussed. The red, white, and green shaded areas represent those concepts concentrated on in this study. The assigned colors uh, were arbitrary and based on the coding of my coding in Atlas. So for example, the red was EFL teacher, white teaching practices, the green intercultural competence, express this uh, intercultural uh, anxiety of fear, cultural inclusion, cultural behavior integration, and cognitive flexibility uh, or openness. Now, uh, the others shaded areas here will only be covered to the extent that it support those covered in, in the study. And the goal would be, for example, strategies and the purple teaching model. Methodology again, the qualitative case study approach, the collection, data collection was an online survey using SurveyMonkey uh, to collect both the intercultural competence assessment data and consent data, the consent form. And at the end of it was a link to schedule the semi-structured interview in Zoom. Data analysis used the computer software Atlas TI-23. Uh, the research findings. This is a major theme conceptual framework emerged from the data. It's one of two, it's the second one, okay? Uh, in this major theme, there are four themes. The first one was 
uh, communication and classroom dynamics expressed as addressing cultural challenges and promising uh, promoting intercultural understanding, effective communication and dynamics, challenges and norms, and also promoting accountability, fairness and behavior. Noting here, of course, uh, effective communication strategies may influence the promotion of accountability, fairness and ethical behavior. So under this thing, participant number one, right, mentioned tying this to diversity and inclusion and taking elements of that when thinking about being more inclusive of people from other cultures. Under the same thing, participant number four uh, experience was that you can't make jokes and usually discourages it because the students are general language learners and not very well advanced and they don't understand uh, the nuances. Under this theme, number two, uh, education and teaching approaches expressed as uh, effective instructional practices and curriculum design, intercultural education and teaching approaches, noting that effective instructional practices and curriculum design supports the uh, implementation of intercultural education and teaching approaches. So under, under this theme, participant number one, spoke about going back about 15 years or so, and that uh, nowadays uh, cultural, the culturally diverse online classroom would uh, be a mix of students who are not obviously studying about other cultures, but learning about them through community-based, task-based activities, i.e. problem solving, where they are working together to focus on improving their English. Uh, the third theme was intercultural awareness and sensitivity expressed as cultural values, cultural responsive teaching practices, effective intercultural communication, uh, intercultural awareness and sensitivity, and supportive intercultural classroom environment. Noting here that culturally responsive teaching practices and effective intercultural communication can integrate to create a supportive intercultural classroom environment. Now, under this theme, participant number four talked about intercultural interactions in the classroom, suggesting he could feel the discomfort sometimes uh, among his students, especially if there's somebody from Europe and somebody from India uh, stating, uh, quote unquote, it's easy to see, and this arises mostly because of culture. The last theme under this major theme, number four, was personal growth and professional development expressed as growth and development of teachers' intercultural competence, personal and professional development of intercultural competence, self-reflection, and awareness. Noting here that growth and development of teachers' intercultural competence is a developmental stage towards achieving personal and professional development of intercultural competence. So under this theme, participant number seven who is the uh, the teacher with the most years, 35 years of teaching. She talked about the assessment making her more mindful of when she goes back into the classroom. The research findings, the inventory of cross-cultural sensitivity assessment scores. So this is an image, this is a visualization of the assessment scores from the Mahone and Kushner 2014 instrument. And it was important to the interview process. Seven participants, uh, Several of them took the assessment and only four did both the assessment and the interviews. That'd be participants number one, four, six, and seven. Right. Okay. Um, participants numbers four and seven had the highest scores with the scores uh, and the interviews, and it's shown by all green in the in the image here. The intercultural assessment scores help facilitate deep reflections of the participants' perceptions of their teaching practices. For example, asking about their score versus their perceived score primed them for the follow-on protocol questions. The visualizations that scores were formulated, that is to say, such representations were not depicted in any other studies. So this was the first for visualizations of this kind. This was because the committee members suggested by the participants seeing their raw scores, it may dissuade them from continuing. So I had to devise a stoplight color scheme that could facilitate a conversation. 
So participant number six was the only participant anywhere close to anything like uh, discomfort, but I really wouldn't call it discomfort. It was more a feeling of being forced to answer questions a certain way than discomfort. She seemed to feel she was being, in her own words, pigeonholed into certain thinking and answers she was just unwilling to concede. Research findings, the major combined themes by participants one, four, six, and seven. This is a Sankey diagram, which is essentially a cross tab table, rows, themes on the left by columns, participants on the right, and you would normally see a number in the cell, right? But instead we see the, the thickness of the line. So the lines or flows as they're called in the middle represent the data or quotations used for the themes on the left by the participants on the right. So the thicker the lines, the more contribution to a particular theme a participant has. Okay, so you can see the separation if you look at participant number seven. You see a little white indentation there it separates that from number six, and you can see white indentations uh, between six and four, and the same on the left with the themes. The white indentation separates the themes. So if we look at the top at participant number seven on the right, right. It has a thick line of flow to personal growth and professional development more than any other participant. This is another Sankey diagram, right, across tab table. Okay, but this time, themes on the left by assessment scores on the right. And um, if you look, only participants four and seven had all green. If you look on the right, just around halfway, you can see that there's a large contribution between participants four than any of the other. And the other ones are just mixed variations of the scores. The implications for theory and practice, uh, transformative potential, right? Self-assessment tools enhance EFL teachers into cultural competence. Integrating comprehensive assessment framework advances the understanding of intercultural competence. The study underscores the transformative potential of assessment and expanding the dynamic nature of intercultural competence. The CEFR or our Common European Framework of Reference for Languages and the TESOL standards are prescriptive frameworks highlighting the importance of specifying assessments, performance objectives, proficiency standards to enhance intercultural competence. So the research here contributes two conceptual frameworks of the field of EFL a teaching and intercultural competence. Uh, this one you've seen already, it was the second one and derived from the first combined concepts of the four participants, as you see here. So this one, it's a combined EFL teacher perception and teaching practices conceptual framework. An integrated, it's integrated directly from the the coding of the four EFL teachers and includes, if you look in the middle, the first one, EFL teacher perceptions and attitudes. And top right, you can see number two, intercultural competency and awareness. And at the bottom left, you can see number three, the classroom environment and dynamics. At the bottom, number four, communication and interpersonal uh, challenges. Number five, top left, teaching strategies, approaches, and methods. Number six at the top, uh, personal growth, reflection, and development. And the last one, number seven, bottom right, social context and uh, cultural factors. Okay, so that takes us uh, to the end. I can't believe it. It, it kind of went fast. <laughs> I had fun presenting it. I hope you did as well. Uh, and maybe the technical staff can help or let's see, look in the, uh, the chat. Maybe they can pull some, some questions from the chat. If not, then I'll go to the polls that I have. Tech staff, please. Sure. Um, so there, were, there was a comment from Dr. Kelly Olson-Stewart indicating that she was sending the best from Dr. Robinson since she's presenting at another time. But there okay. are no other comments in the chat. So how about if you go into the polls in Whova? Okay. and address things from there. Unless somebody right. in the, who's attending would like to to join us and, and come on camera and, and off mute to contribute. I can get it started and so that they can kind of get an idea. So the first question was, 
right? How do you think about your intercultural competence, uh, your intercultural uh, competence? And then some of the comments were, you know, uh, very high. Uh, I've made this element a priority. I'd like to know uh, where I need to close the gap. Moderate. Uh, I effectively uh, and appropriately communicate and interact with people from different backgrounds, always learning. Uh, let's see. I have high competence in this area. Uh, let me take uh, the second one. How does your personal intercultural competence impact your teaching practices? Um, very high as well. Let's say positively allowing me to meet the needs of all my students or try to. Intensely, I have shifted my thinking to uh, cultural uh, humility. And that has helped quite significantly, very much. Uh, it impacts everything from books and articles and impacts my perspective. So the question number three was, if you are not currently teaching, how might your understanding of intercultural competence impact your daily interactions? Uh, under this one, let's see. I look toward uh, scoping relevant coursework. Uh, I treat all students uh, equally, remembering the importance of equity in learning uh, will have a huge impact on performance and inner satisfaction. Uh, to practice emotional intelligence effectively and consistently, and I'm teaching, but if I, if I were not, my understanding would positively share my daily interactions. It removes bias. So I don't know if any of anybody else might have any more comments about any of the the questions. If not, then uh, we would go to comments in general. Any comments on on this from anybody? Maybe want to answer the question. No. Dr. Zorn um, said, thank you. Very interesting and informative. Okay. In the chat. All right. So I would say thank you for the opportunity to, to share my research. Right. And, uh, this this session I informed by the, the tech staff might be left open for a little while if you have if you want to talk about it a little bit longer, but we have time now if there's any questions in general about this research. Anything? Uh I would say that I, I had noticed that people were um there's a lot about students intercultural competence. You know, I'm also a qualified IDI. So there's all this research and talk about, you know, student intercultural competence, but as far as uh, teachers, so how do you teach it if you've not been assessed whether or not you have it or not is my question. But I, I just kind of sense a lot of discomfort in that area. You know, any comments about that? Dr. Hamilton, and um, do you think from like, based off your research, um, that it's easy to overestimate your intercultural competence to, to say like maybe you're you're competent in this area when you know maybe you necessarily aren't yeah well see that's that's kind of my point is if you haven't been uh assessed right you how you say you can correct what you, you know, what you've been assessed on and then people uh what I heard in the research was that okay well we have training well of course but you know, at what level, if we lose, if we use Bloom's taxonomy, at what level have you, you know, is the training, you know, I also used to create, the, you know, the, uh, the training. So the learning objectives, right, if you use Bloom's can be right, understanding, remembering, applying, you know, analysis, evaluation, creation. So if, if the, if the learning objectives, you know, oh, I've had training before are understanding and remembering is not definitely not application, right? And you've not necessarily been assessed, right? So um, the instrument I used, you know, you can get the stoplight thing because if, like what the committee said, if you look at raw numbers, people may have a lot of discomfort. But as an IDI, you actually do get, you know, I, I've been assessed myself and, you know, I'm a little bit lower than what I thought I might be. So people will be surprised and they have development plans for that. 
So I think that's one of the things that helped in this research. They got assessed, so they had the real score versus the perceived score, and they started to reflect. And that was the, the jumping off of the discussion and the research. And I had, you know, about eight or nine questions. But they were like, wow, I didn't realize that. So unless you assessed, you know, maybe you haven't really had time to deeply reflect on it. Thank you for the question, Ryan. You know. I think I would questions? like to know more about the assessment process. Right, right. Yeah. Um always a sensitive topic, you know, when you talk about uh disclosure and things like that. Okay. So um like I use you saw I was using participant number one, participant number seven, et cetera, et cetera. Um so that consent forms, confidentiality is definitely important. Uh now the the IDI process is a little bit different because there's definitely there's a group number about the group that you may be in, and then there's individuals. So individual is always confidential, and there's a personal one-on-one, -on -one, you know, uh, how you say revealing. Uh, I'd, I'd hate to say, uh, you know, uh, assessments. There is a there's a score. You know, there's a band, if you will, and it talks about what that is. Okay, and then. Uh, there's a lot of questions during the during the debrief about wow I, I I thought I was you know higher than that how how um and so validity you know reliability you know it's always challenges with that once you start talking about the score but then we talk about okay so now what does the intercultural development uh, plan look like what kind of activities can we do you know uh, and some of the evaluators express concern because in their um uh in their organization they weren't actually at the table they weren't at the table with the uh the executives you know for uh, business impact and all those kinds of things because they said well you're not really that's just diversity and inclusion that's not really you know part of the thing and I was like what do you mean okay so it's very difficult to integrate uh, diversity and inclusion and cultural competence into something that's impactful for the business. It, it's not difficult if you're looking to do it, but if you just say, okay, well, let's do diversity and inclusion, and the people are going like, I, you know, we're just spending money unless you can link it to business impact. So that's one of the things I'm trying to do now. I'm just trying to link it to uh, the vision of the organization all the way through business impact. And uh, there's research that says culturally diverse organizations have a 35% increase in profitability. So that's that's the kind of work I'm trying to do. I look forward to that. Um, I feel like for me personally, I am my entire life has been a journey of learning more um, about other people. And so that, you know, for me, my life is enriched by culture. And yet I also know that I still have so much to learn. <laughs> I just, like, I feel like I've scraped the surface and that's it. And, and so I look very much forward to mm. hearing more from you in the future. I think that you have um, a real gift for how you present. And I feel like you have much to offer. Well, thank you for those kind words. So. Very welcome. You know, I, we, yeah, have one, we, we have one. We have one minute ahead. left. We're okay. we're at the final minute, um, right. and so I I need to wrap us up and say thank you to you, Dr. Hamilton, for your okay. presentation today, and to the thank audience you. for their participation. Um, for the few people who are left in the presentation, we do have a feedback link for your conference experience in the chat box. If you wouldn't mind taking the time to fill that out and providing your feedback, that would be much appreciated. Thank you so much again. And um, that ends our presentation today. Thank you. Thank you.